My Amstrad PC1512, a video by Paul Isabest, 3UK. So here we have my Amstrad 1512, XT Classic PC, vintage. This is a very old system, as you can see, it's a bit yellowed on the keyboard. The keyboard layout's different. Last tested in 1996, apparently. It's a 1512DD model, which stands for double drive, but I'd change one of them for GoTech. I also purchased this XT IDE, which is a modern uh, replacement, and a compact flash to IDE adapter with two gigabyte cards. So that's a great hard drive solution. They're both connected together using a standard floppy drive. So let's have a look inside. Got a lot of heat shield in here. Yeah, the majority of it's heat shield for FCC regulations back in the day. Got your Amstrad chips here. And these empty sockets here are to expand the memory from 512k to 640k. I don't have that expansion currently. So let's have a look on the inside of the machine. It's actually more trickier than it looks to get this shield in off. So inside you can see it's neatly laid out. Sadly all the connectors are soldered onto the board so it's gonna, you'd have to desolder to replace the cable in and stuff. But yeah, everything's nice and laid out. There's the 8-bit ISA slots. This one's 1986 copyright Amstrad, Allen Sugar Trading. Yep, so there's a Zilog chip there, that's a floppy drive controller. We've got our 512 built-in RAM and expansion ports as mentioned. So with it all back together, let's fire it up and have a look at it in action. The system is powered by the monitor, without the monitor it's, you can't run it. And the power button is on the back of the monitor. Power lights on, so it swivel the monitor around so the camera can see it. And here we go. You are first greeted with this please wait screen. Doesn't take long. I think it's just testing the RAM. And as you can see, there's my uh, X Tide Universal Bio. So that was that modern thing I put in earlier that I showed you. That's uh, giving us a hard drive, or like this is the uh, compact flash working right now. I've got a uh, MS-DOS on here, an early version to try and keep the memory footprint low. Bear in mind this computer's only got 512 kilobytes of RAM. It is not expanded to 640k. So let's have a look. So I've got a few things on here, including Windows. I thought you might like to see how Windows runs. This is Windows 3.0 which is the last version of Windows that's compatible with this system. Now the, the system only has an, a CGA based art video card so we're going to not get the best out of Windows but nevertheless it's quite impressive. Um, my system has a monochrome monitor as you can see and uh, look, it's it, it 512k and it's running Windows. Oh yeah, it's got, a, it's got a slight bit of a fault. Just bash it on the top and it comes back on. There we go. Yeah, that's not ideal, I know. I should probably check the solder joints inside the monitor. It's probably got a bad solder joint somewhere or something like that. But anyway, yeah, so you can see right, right, running fine on Windows 3.0 on top of DOS, all in 512k of RAM on an XT based system so it does actually run quite well yes it is a bit slower than what you would expect these days but it's not overly slow so yeah you can change the font size just like you can on any good word processor and uh, yeah it seems to work really well here we go right in Windows 3.0 in 512k of 
Ram on an Amstrad 5112 and an XT clone. Paintbrush runs fine. To be honest, all of the Windows 3.0 standard applications run fine. Because there's no VGA and no colour in this graphics mode, uh, the colours at the bottom are like divid, divid patterns instead. But well, yeah, it seems quite responsive, as you can see. Now you can use a serial mouse with these. They did have a proprietary Amstrad mouse. But if you want to use a serial mouse, it's fine. All you've got to do is buy a big serial port to little serial port adapter, a couple of quid on eBay, and use just a standard PC serial mouse. But you will have to use the PC serial mouse driver and not the Amstrad mouse driver because obviously it's different. But if because the Amstrad original mice are quite rare, or well, I don't know if they're rare, but they're quite expensive. 30, 40 pound plus, you might as well just use a PC serial mouse if you happen to got one. Works just as well. Here you can see Solitaire running. As you can see, it draws the uh, deck on quite slowly. But what do you expect for an 8086 machine? Or 8088, whatever it is. But it does, it's still playable, it still runs. You see it drawing slowly, but when, when, when you start playing the game, it works fine. So I'll come out of this. Have a look at the uh, main folder, which is that one, and the uh, window setup. Does take a little bit of a long time for programs to load, but we are running an 8 bit IDE uh, CF card buzz, and also the processor slow. You can see that it's got a display of CGA, and there we go. So, you can actually put a sound card in this machine, but uh, it would have to be an 8-bit one for a guess because this computer does not have 16-bit ISA ports so I'm sure you want to see a few games so as you can see on the uh, on the CF card I've got games folder so if I change directory into the games folder got a few games on here some of them don't work but the majority do I just haven't got around to deleting the ones that don't work. But I'll show you Monkey Island. That works fine. If I can remember how to do it. I'll have a look what's in this BAT file, but I don't think that's uh, for this system. I think. Can find. Yeah, the keyboard's laid out differently than a normal PC, so it can be a bit awkward to find which key you want. Yeah, so that's actually flagged up for VGA, so we don't want that. So if I just type in monkey, we want C for CGA and MO for mouse. That's to get Monkey Island running in CGA mode. If your version of Monkey Island does not work with these commands, there is an older version of Monkey Island 1 that does support CGA. The later version didn't, but this older version does. Just in case you're trying to get the game running on your Amstrad 1512. So, here we go. A few seconds later and the game should come on. Now we've got the uh, piracy screen, it's the, well the uh, protection screen, but uh, this, this version's cracked so it just automatically gets through it anyway. I do apologise about the uh, CRT refresh. I'm filming this with a Honor 9 phone and uh, it doesn't like this vintage uh, monochrome monitor. But you can still just about make out the image. You can see that Monkey Island's come on there. The music from the PC speaker. I presume if you was to add an 8-bit sound card in you would be able to get the proper ad-lib soundtrack. But 
I haven't got one of them so we're just stuck with the uh, PC speaker and as you can see Monkey Island runs quite well for such a vintage system well when I say it runs well it runs well enough you can still play it but the uh, scrolling and stuff is quite slow you'll see that in a minute when he walks across and Guy Bush walks across you'll see the slow slowness of the refresh rate and slowness of the scrolling speed as you can see and this is running in CGA mode it's colour if you've got a colour monitor but CGA has only got about four colours so it, it doesn't look great but it's still playable and it's still proof of concept that Monkey Island will run on this ancient XT machine which is quite impressive in my opinion now let's open the door and have a look inside here so yeah that's uh, Monkey Island running on the uh, Amstrad PC1512 see, see how slow it scrolls but, but other than that it's still playable that's down to the uh, either the limited display hardware or the CPU or a combination of both. So let's come out of Monkey Island and have a look at some other stuff on the uh, CF card. Let's have a look at Ultima. That also works on the, uh, if I can get the uh, type out right, Ultima tilde 1. Should probably rename these files, but because uh, I copied them from a modern PC, it's put them in a uh, short name format. That was LFN files originally. But yeah, as you can see, Ultima runs fine. Origin Systems very early RPG I've uh, been playing it already so I've already got a character build and yet this is Ultima running fine not sure how you play this one but yeah it, it looks it's quite fun to play in, regardless even though I don't know how to play it but yeah looks good looks very vintage and old school don't look too bad considering it's in monochrome monitor as well would look better on a colour monitor though for a guess so recently I purchased a Planet X3 from the 8-bit guy uh, from his website and when you purchase it you get a instant digital download so I transferred it onto this system my boxed uh, floppy hasn't arrived yet but the digital download is instant so I thought I'd show you Planet X3 on here as well it's great of the 8-bit guy to uh, make it compatible with such old machines like a modern game on a vintage computer is great news Great PC speaker music on my system.
Rockford, a Boulder Dashlight game also works great on this system. Good fun. Yeah, I thought you you'd might like to see this uh, Amstrad 1512 in action and uh, if you want me to do another video about it and add more games or whatever or any game suggestions let me know in the comments and uh, thank you for watching and uh, have fun on the, on the rest of your day. Thank you for watching. Goodbye.